U.S. Muslims, Americans' suspicions and tensions are building. More than nine years of denouncing terrorism, of praying side by side with Christians and Jews, of insisting I'm American too, but none of it could stop a season of hate against Muslims that made for an especially fraught September 11th. And now Muslims are asking why their efforts to be accepted in the United States have been so easily thwarted. We have nothing to apologize for. We have nothing to fear. We have nothing to be ashamed of. We have nothing that we're guilty of. But we need to be out there and we need to express this, said an Ayman in a sermon at the Islamic Institute of Orange County in Anaheim, California, the day before the 911 anniversary. And there is no simple way for American Muslims to move forward. Images of violence overseas in the name of Islam have come to define the faith for many non-Muslims at home. The U.S. remains at war in Afghanistan, and although America has formally declared an end to its combat operations in Iraq, U.S. troops there continue to fight alongside Iraqi forces. Within the United States, domestic terrorism has become a greater threat, some say, while ignorance about what Islam teaches is widespread. More than half of respondents in a recent poll by the Pew Forum for Religion and Public Life said they knew little or nothing about the Muslim faith. Some U.S. Muslims say their national organizations also share the blame for answering intricate questions about Islam with platitudes and failing to fully examine the potential for extremism within their communities. Muslim leaders often respond when terrorists strike by saying Islam is a religion of peace but has no role in the violence instead of confronting the legitimate concerns of other Americans these Muslim critics say. The summer frenzy about Islam in America has revolved around Park 51, a community center and mosque planned just two blocks from New York's Ground Zero. Opponents and supporters of the center converged on the area for protests and counter-protests on Saturday after the morning memorial ceremony at the World Trade Center site. In recent months, mosques in Tennessee, California, New York, and elsewhere have been shot at and vandalized. Threatening messages were left at one mosque. A Florida pastor, Terry Jones, caused a global uproar with his ultimately unfulfilled threat to make a bonfire of Korans on September 11th, although most likely, the damage has already been done. Many Jewish, Roman Catholic, mainline Protestant, Evangelical, and other groups have responded with an outpouring of support for Muslims. But suspicion remains high among many Americans still. Islamic centers have become a focus of non-Muslim fears. Federal authorities have placed informants in mosques, saying doing so is a critical counter-terrorism tool. Muslim groups have separately created national campaigns encouraging congregations to monitor for any sign of radicalization. But they have also complained bitterly about the use of informants, worried the innocent will be caught up in the net police have set for criminals. Akbar Ahmed, professor of Islamic studies at American University, found a wide range of mosques, from literist to modernist to mystical, while researching his book, Journey into America, The Challenge of Islam. He said, many mosques are engaged in internal struggles between Muslims with rigid and 
modernist views, but he found none that fit the imaginings of anti-Muslim conspiracy theorists. Historians and several Muslim leaders see similarities to the prejudice Roman Catholics and Jews experienced as newcomers to America starting in the 19th century. But this time it's also different. Mark Silk, director of the Greenberg Center for the Study of Religion and Public Life at Trinity College in Connecticut, said the experience of Japanese Americans in World War II more closely parallels the current plight of Muslims. After the Pearl Harbor bombing, Silk said, Americans asked, are our Japanese different from those Japanese? I don't think we're about to round up all the Muslims and put them in concentration camps, Silk said. I don't think we've ever seen a degree of legitimacy given by people in positions of authority to straight up anti-Islamic expression. The Muslim Public Affairs Council, a Los Angeles-based advocacy group, blames the prejudices on a small cottage industry that foments or foments prejudice on the web and elsewhere. These organizations have dramatically expanded their reach since 2001 through social media and have made celebrities of Muslim converts to Christianity who disparage Islam as thoroughly violent. The reality is that there are very well funded initiatives to spread misinformation about Islam, said the President of the Islamic Society of North America, an umbrella group for thousands of Muslims. For the Muslim community, we are finding ourselves so stretched. We are a young community. U.S. Muslim condemnations of terrorism have failed to persuade other Americans. And throughout the recent anti-Muslim outburst, American Muslim leaders have taken pains to acknowledge that many in their community have prospered in the United States and that Muslims have more freedom here than they would in many other countries. But at the same time, fatigue is setting in. They wonder how many more times will they have to condemn violent extremism before non-Muslim Americans believe them. In other words, the, the actions of a few do not indicate the actions of the majority. And all these are more signs of end times transition days. Everybody must learn to get along quickly or rapidly because real changes are happening or coming to this world. 2 Corinthians chapter 4 Therefore, seeing we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we faint not too, but have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every human's conscience in the sight of God. 3. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. 4. In whom the God of this world has blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. 5. For we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves your servants for Jesus' sake. 6. For God, who commanded the light to shine out of darkness, has shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. 7. For we have this treasure in earthen vessels, that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. And all these are more signs.
happening daily all around the world and increasing in frequency.